So I did want to change the timing belt um, and I have to change the water pump. I so uh, yeah, let's uh, let's start that now. So and I'm able to just put pressure on that. This one's a bit tougher. Oh. What I did was I just uh, tapped it with a chisel in between the, the fan there and uh, then that that's come loose but you can see probably better okay the power steering pump now and uh, I've got the other adjustment bolt out of the other side So, yep, that's it. Okay, cool. I'll undo the uh, alternator. Um, there's another bolt there. It's a bigger, uh, it's a bigger bolt. Just let me see if this will, uh, this one will fit. Yep. Okay, I'll remove the alternator and the belt. The belt might just come off now. Possibly. Yep, there's I've got the uh, I've got the gearbox in fifth gear and I've got the brake on. I've got a twenty four millimeter socket and uh, we'll just see how we go breaking that uh, that main bolt down there. Getting it loose on that properly. Well, yeah, I think it's loose. It didn't take much. And there's uh, some bolts, I think I can feel. One, two, three, four bolts in there, and I'll uh, I'll show the rest after. Okay, it seems like the nuts actually uh, pulled that onto the uh, into the situation there to be situated with the uh, the nut tension. It's got a slight um, camber on the end of it there. It's rounded here on the edge. So that came out okay. I don't know about the harmonic balancer. Uh, at this stage we can get the water pump drive off. That's now loose. I'm gonna... Okay, I'll give it some lube. Okay, I've got a pulley on the uh, harmonic balancer now. So they're only 10 millimeter screws, but they're, they're long and they're screwed all the way in. And I've got washers on the outside. These are all spares I had. Okay, so there's a uh, fisheye lens picture of the setup. So I'm not too confident about the, uh, the stress that the the 10 mil bolts can take. But we'll uh, we'll do it, do up that and uh, put some tension on it and see how we go. So at this point she is uh, she is moving. She's coming off. So just gonna spray a bit more. Uh, 
Okay, it should be removable at any time. Try doing it by hand here. Yep. Okay, so there it is. You want to make sure you don't drop it. Okay, it's quite a lot of weight in it. Okay, so it helps with the uh, momentum of the uh, the engine. And it also, well, at least one of them, the inside drives of the belt, as you can see, the inside one's uh, worn there. Okay, so that was my setup. I've, and it's, uh, it's just well and truly paid for itself today. So that's why I sprayed lubricant, because uh, you want it to get down in that crevice there. So it'll come off, so it looks like it's run into there. Okay, because there's oil inside. Down in there. Also, that white timing mark there, that's your timing, okay? So, probably want to mark this inside one. That's your timing there. Okay, the timing mark that we use is the one most to the left, or the most anti-clockwise. It's, uh, it's this one here, for timing. Those marks, okay. So now, I have to get the uh, timing belt cover off. And so, just again, once more, that that's your timing mark there. Uh, now, the the alternator is a different setup. It does have an arm going on to the water pump, so of course this will have to be taken off. So I'll take this off and set that aside. So it's in two pieces. First piece is the bottom piece to there, and we can see the top piece here. Got the bracket off. I put all my screws uh, straight back in so they're not lost and I know what they are. Okay. So, top timing belt cover. Ah uh, yes, I've been in here before. I've had this one off before. I'm pretty sure that I did some creative uh, work there. Okay, the nut from here is missing. We've got this, uh, this nut here. I'm pretty sure that there is some tension on that. Okay, so the uh, the nut did in fact drag this whole uh, dowel pin out. So that, I'm pretty sure that went in there. So, um, yeah, what I'll do is I'll get this nut off and I'll try and salvage that and hopefully it'll go back in. We can see this is very slack. And this feels, I don't know, a fair amount of slack in it. Okay, uh, what actually happened here was the uh, the nut rusted onto the end there. And uh, I've got the nut off. I had to put it in a vise very tightly and I did do some damage to this area here. It doesn't matter because I, I filed the, the burrs away. Um, I've got, I do have two nuts to make a lock nut. So, if I thread that on there, and thread that on there, and I tighten this bottom one, this bottom nut up, and I tighten them together, I can then turn it in. And apparently this is from the, the pivot point of the, uh, the belt tensioner. Okay, so there's the, uh, like the dowel pin there. What I did was, I sort of tightened them up, uh, against each other 
you know, like sort of like like that. And now, now I'm able to uh, see those nuts won't turn, and I'm able to just turn it in there. Okay, so that's it. Now I just undo the top nut. And uh, then they come, they come off, and it's uh, situated, uh, <laughs> situated in there. Not exactly poetry in motion, but it's uh, yeah, progress. So now I'll just put some oil on that and make sure it's lubed. But I know that from experience, if I got another car with say 250, 280 or even 270,000 kilometres on it I'd, uh, I'd change the water pump, the alternator, the battery and the, the fuel pump you know, um, I'd keep those parts as spares um, but that's how I would definitely approach uh, approach it next time Okay, well, that's it. Okay, well, there it is. Okay, it's the 30th of the uh, 6th, 2023. Okay, the gearbox is in uh, neutral. You can just see the white line there. Bring that up in line with this that mark there. So here it comes now. Just fighting against the compression there. Oh, and okay, the second try now. So there it is there. Just go slowly this time. Now we're in line. We can see the amount of slack in that. So now I'll, um, I've got one of these to renew. So I'll push the tension off the belt. Now as I undo the tension on this, uh, on the strainer here, we should see the, the belt tighten up. No, not really. It's tighter on this side, but I think because it's worn, it's not transferring through to this side, although that's, I suppose that might be a bit, bit tighter. Yeah, okay. Okay, now I'll um, get the tension off the belt. Okay, there is a little lever just here, and I'm placing the... Uh, tie or the crowbar or, or the iron on that probably won't work now because it's on and then do it up okay so now that should slip off um, just double checking it's all in line the top and the bottom these two are in line. There's one notch there, and one notch is here. Um, that's interesting because, yeah, there's a white... Oh, I see. He's marked. I'll show it in a sec. But it's all lined up. I'll film through the, uh, through the grill. So, yeah, this can just come straight off. Okay, so we can see here that's almost uh, lined up. So it might be better off filming it this way. That could go over a bit. I'll readjust that later. Um, 
there's the spring mechanism the bolt I'll put the tire iron against this part here that's uh, that's pretty good um, that I believe is the oil pump and then we come down here and so apparently we've got this notch here and this bit here that lines up with that so that's pretty uh, that's pretty good the strange thing is or maybe not so strange the, the previous person has put this white line here Let's try and film that a bit better and that lines up with that maybe they did the work from underneath the car the spring mechanism I do have this part here so that's the pivot point there on top okay and then the adjuster and that's pretty much all there is to it I, I suspect that when this when this is undone this will go all the way here and the spring will, won't have any tension on it I can then put on my new uh, pulley system there Okay, well I got this car with 280,000 kilometres on it and it's now got uh, 480, 480 kilometres on it. Um, this belt would have been on before I purchased it. So this belt's got more than 200,000 kilometres on it. And uh, it actually looks pretty good. I might be able to get the light and film it a bit better. So little bit of wear on the outside if I turn it inside out it's not bad it's not that bad that it's it has to be replaced I am a careful driver um, but the these belts would last a, a long time I think I do have some uh, torque settings the the um, crankshaft pulley bolt is 103 to 132 newton meters what I'll do is um, replace this uh, this pulley now so we established yesterday that there was some movement in that and uh, some noise so I'll go ahead and replace the pulley now so um, that's a swivel there so I think it should be as simple as undoing the uh, adjusting nut there um, uh, dropping it back releasing the spring tension and just sliding it off it's a good idea not to back this off too much and still have the base supporting otherwise um, this will turn in the thread and this is only aluminium so okay well that sprung back by itself so yeah that's the spring is loose so as as we can see that's going to be should be very easy to replace i'll just clean this up the reason this engine doesn't uh, leak a whole lot of uh, oil is that i use very heavy weight oil i use um, 60 weight oil also this car had a um a very very cool or cold running thermostat okay I've just got uh, a solution of fuel here Okay, we can now see that it's uh, it's cleaned up. I cleaned the gasket off with a combination of things. I used a scraper, just scraping around, making sure that it's flat. I used a uh, like a Scotch uh, type of scourer. Um, I also used this. Um, and also there's cleaner and uh, so I sprayed that on but uh, one thing to consider is um, 
making sure you don't get it in the threads. So I had the bolts in when I when I did the spraying um, because you can you might be able to get a hydro lock when you put your bolts in if there's uh, fluid in there. Okay, so there's the uh, new one on the right and the old one from 1995 or that's probably not actually because it's been I'd say it had been replaced just have a look at the difference in uh, design the main difference is the bearing okay so on the front we can see the bearing design better Okay, well, let's uh, let's put it on. So I'm just going to carefully put some there. I don't want it to get on that. This is a symmetrical spring, which makes things easy. Put it on the top first, like so. The crack the adjuster nut there. Okay, well, we can see that there's plenty of room. It doesn't really matter whether you install the uh, tensioner or the water pump first. Okay, so there's our water pump. I don't have any um, thread here on this one here. So that means I will have to go out and buy some bolts to uh, to install the um, the fan fins. You can see a completely. They're completely different. If we have a look, we can see that this is clearly not as far out as this one here. So, because this did fail and this was a replacement part, it's not the original pump then I suppose I have no option but to give this a go and this this is wider that disc and so it comes out the same same place but I'll have to get some uh, some bolts for that okay well it goes on now it's important that uh, this work is done either in the morning in summer or in winter because otherwise you can form a skin on the uh, on the um, on the silicon. So I'm using high temperature uh, silicon here or gasket maker. Um, I've cleaned my surface, as we know. I'm just going to apply it to the surface. Just going to dab and smear it on I don't want to get it in the holes I would like to, I prefer to get it on the other side of that of the thread uh, yes we are going to use a gasket as well it's funny we have some wind and the wind started the second that I started applying this you know, truth, I've always, I've said it for a long time, truth is uh, stranger than fiction. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is to wear gloves, but have a bunch of slack in the end of the glove like that. Even uh, spray painting out of a can can, it can ruin it. So, I'll keep going here for a sec. Okay, well as you can see I've just uh, 
I've spread it out on both sides and also sort of went along like that. Um, this takes a, a little bit of time and you could imagine because the silicon is very thin uh, it could potentially take quite a while. Um, if, and if it was done in summer uh, then of course uh, could take so much time that um, it could form a skin on it. So the good thing about wearing gloves is you can just take the gloves off once they get too full of silicon. That silicon's flowing still, still it's not forming a skin or starting to harden. So I just centre them Center that around the holes. Uh, this is my own idea, applying silicon like this. Um, I'll just change my gloves so I don't get the silicon on the, on the water pump. There goes the, uh, the breeze blowing things about. Okay, so we've got the ridge along here, and we have to remember to put on our um, alternator bracket. Well, hopefully, it'll find its way through the gasket. Now, there are some uh, some of these bolts are a different size. So maybe there is one long bolt and I've put it there, but I'll get that sorted. Okay, there's two long bolts. I'm thinking they're going to go in the bracket but I'm going to have to get this one out of the alternator okay yeah that's what it is few more so they're passing through the uh, the gasket which is a good sign could be much worse Okay, it's a really good idea to have the uh, the bolt in for the alternator because this would have been too far down. If I just tap that, make sure that's tapped up. And now I can just start. If I'm lucky, to uh, just tighten up in a crisscross uh, fashion there was a bit of slack in that one okay I'll go ahead and get that tightened up Okay, it's interesting, uh, the, the nuts do decrease in tension if you give it a few minutes.
Okay, well, I'll keep doing that until they bottom out. And uh, then tomorrow and the next day I'll just run, out, run around them again. Um, and tighten them up as need be. Okay, I think we can move on to the belt now. Okay, now I need to get the pulley pulled over. So I can put my belt on. Okay, this is a Gates uh, timing belt. Let's try and hold that steady. Okay, we can see that this notch is not in line with this uh, this notch here. So this is over that way. So I'm going to bring it in line. So I think that's a little more accurate. It should really be in this dish here. Okay, I'll have a second look at that. And if I'm not happy, I'll readjust it. But this is the one that's going to move on you. Okay. Now, I said to use uh, brake parts cleaner, but what it actually did is it almost got rid of my mark. It's only a paint mark. So you might be better off just grinding or, or et etching a little notch in there for it to uh, be a little more, um, shall we say, uh, long term. Or dependable. Okay, there we have it. That's uh, that's what I'd call a little more forward thinking. There's a little notch there now, so we can't get uh, can't get lost because accidents do happen. And if this did move, and you did use brake parts cleaner to clean it, then uh, it'd be very difficult to find. The orientation of this but anyway that's done Okay, now I'll spin, spin the belt around a number of times. Um, actually, I should probably get the tension off that. Uh, put the tension on the uh, belt. Okay, the belt is uh, ten got full tension on that side. So now I'll back off that bolt. Okay, so I'm having troubles rotating the engine, so I'm going to uh, loosen off the spark plugs. No, it's jamming. The uh, 
the lines are, are, uh, are all lined up. Okay, at this point it's very, very uh, important to uh, take the car out of gear. So if you've had the car in gear inside the cab, you put the gear stick in gear. Um, you need to make it uh, free rotating, so put it in neutral so that the, the engine will rotate. And um, I'm going to, I've rotated the belt once, so I'll rotate it again. The, um, the spark plugs are out. I've rotated it. Now I'm going to rotate it back a little bit. And uh, release the spring tension. Okay, so now I'll do up the uh, retaining nut there. Okay, I've rotated it another three times. I've gone back a little bit. I'm just going to make sure and I'll do it up and uh, that should be job done for the, uh, for the belt. anti-clockwise so I go clockwise to tighten it up getting a bit spun around it's a little bit uh, late in the day okay check the the timing marks before we sign off on this one Okay, so the spark plugs are out, made it much easier to turn. Um, I've already gone over a mistake I made, which was uh, it has to be in neutral for the, of course, for the motor to turn, but you do put it in gear to make sure to so that you can undo this uh, this nut. Um, okay, well the spark plugs are out, and uh, we'll have a look at them tomorrow. There. They're pretty good, um, and so I was able to tension, put more tension on the bolts, even still, a couple of hours after. So I'll give it another tension in a few more days. Okay, um, that's the uh, bearing cover there. I tried a, a few different things, but what happened was uh, I used this small screwdriver, and I just got in from the inside so it's uh, it's positioned like that in on the outside of the bearing race and uh, I just was able to go in on an angle like that so it's very thin it's a bit of an awkward angle I think I'll have to uh, maybe waste some to fill it up enough but I'll I'll work that now into the bearing and uh, clean it up okay well the bearing cover seems to be going in well it was going in okay let's have a look now yep not a problem Okay, job done. I'll just get that paper. I'll get that paper out of there once I've cleaned up. Okay, it's the 16th of the 7th, 2023. And we'll now look at the spark plugs. So, as this car now has, uh, oh geez, uh, 80, 
480,000 on it. This is running that, um, the fuel with the uh, ethanol fuel. So that's the, uh, the worst cylinder one. So now it's time to remove the uh, alternator and put the new one on. I've got this uh, socket on there and a wrench on the other side and we'll uh, um, remove this bolt. So anyway, um, this alternator is about, oh, I'll say seven or eight years old maybe. Now I did notice a little bit of uh, corrosion or white rust here. On this plug so that's uh, that's the plug there no the plug looks good I was getting a uh, a 12 volt reading while driving the car so that usually means that the alternator is not good I believe there should be a 14 volt uh, reading but now is a good opportunity as any to replace it okay well in my experience alternators do usually takes a little bit of time to get everything lined up but um, this seems to be going in a bit I'll just uh, try and line up that bolt with the alternator there we go yep that's installed okay well unfortunately the hole doesn't come anywhere near lining up with this uh, adjustment bracket there, so that's that's looking like a return. Okay, it's the 11th of the uh, 8th, 2023. Um, okay, so I've uh, installed the cover here over the timing belt. Uh, this nut here, pinch point, um, it seemed to have to go back too far unsupported before it met, before it bottomed out. I wasn't really comfortable with that, so I've backed it off a bit. And uh, you might be able to see that it is bowed a little bit here, as it is. Now I've highlighted the uh, the timing marks here. Okay, just once again, um, the timing mark that I'm pointing to, or the furthest left, or the third to the left, is the timing mark you want to use for timing. Um, so I'm satisfied that this is all on properly and tightened up. Um, the bolts would back off during the week and you'd get sort of like, um, say, 15% uh, of a turn on the bolts. Um, these bolts down here have had more time to settle, so they're bottomed out completely over, if you check them after a week. Uh, these do move after uh, one week um, I, I honed this out a bit so that I could get some adjustment up and down the uh, the alternator does move freely um, I'm not going to tighten up the bottom bolt because the chance is tighten up the um, the belt it can sort of jolt forward and put too much pressure on the belt um, and I really don't want that so and that's all connected up that plug the the green plug at the back is pushed in and the uh, that's tightened up there and we can see that a bit better now now we just put on the uh, the harmonic uh, balancer here um, I suppose that's what it's called. Uh, I'm going to choose to put a bit of grease on there. So um, I'm going to put a bit of blue Loctite on it. Okay, so to do that, to get that torque, which is about um, 120, um, I put it in fifth, 
with the handbrake on. Now, the first time I tried it, it seemed to put tension on the timing belt and things didn't, were sort of moving. Um, however, what I did was I put it in neutral and I rotated, I rotated it and, um, then I put it in fifth again and this, that time it bottomed out and it felt like the crank was locking onto the, uh, onto the gearbox and of course the handbrake's on so the engine wouldn't turn. But as I said, the first time it seemed as if there was a little bit of tension on the timing belt so I just stopped. So the measurement I've got is, um, crank, um, timing belt tensioner but the crankshaft pulley bolt and a, in between 103 and 132 so um, because I travelled a little bit more through the uh, 110 um, foot pounds that should give me around about 120 and it's got blue Loctite on the bolt so uh, I'm pretty happy with that but yeah if it feels like it's sort of uh, stretching it could be stretching I don't know how but it could be stretching on the timing belt so I'd just back off and as I said all I did was just put it in reverse rotate, rotated the engine put it back into fifth gear and that time it bottomed out on the engine so uh, I hope that helps and that's a 24 millimeter uh, socket Okay, so next is to put this uh, belt drive on. It does have a notch there, but there's no. That, uh, that dowel pin or that locking mechanism is behind the bolt, behind the bolt washer. So, so that'll just sit there and uh, I'll put these uh, small bolts in. Okay, so now it's uh, the alternator. Put the alternator belt on and uh, the uh, power steering pump. So uh, I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so it's a little bit different this time. Um, we don't have the, uh, the threads out here with this design. We've only got threads within this, uh, this cylinder here. So that'll go on like that and we'll line up the, the threads. I think, I think this will go on. So that goes on there. Okay, just... Okay, there are the bolts and washers for that. But um, I could only just get that on. So try to give you the model uh, and size. If you just bear with me, maybe I'll be able to see the measurements there. That's the uh, that's the information there. And as I say. Um, it will wear in. That's how much it's on the, uh, the adjustment mechanism there, and it is it is tight. However, you have to get it over there, and it does sit in there. So I could only just get it in with the, with the alternator back this way as far as possible. Okay, we're going to put the radiator, the shroud, and the fan on in one go um, so I've painted this with uh, rust, black rust paint so there's a fair amount of rust on that and I scraped it back um, the radiator didn't stand up well to high pressure hose cleaning um, there was some fin damage very slight fin damage so it's uh, exceptionally weak, but no doubt it does do a good job at cooling. Um, there were some rust points around here, around the edges. And down below that's been treated too. 
so um, okay well time for the uh, assembly of the um, power steering so it's just a matter of uh, the reverse which is to hook up the, the hose um, put the uh, the pump onto the bracket here you have two uh, two bolts there and then the line gets supported at these two points here at this point the uh, the fan drive is uh, floating and that'll be tensioned up later so I'll just remove these uh, covers Okay, we're up to reinstalling the radiator so at the moment this area here of the frame um, I scraped back and also treated with the uh, the rust paint um, just, just that one there so I've got a feeling I can reinstall the radiator and then the fa fan will sit within the shroud and we should be able to get the, the shroud on okay so at this stage we're going to want to Get our bottom hose on. Okay, it's all about, with the shroud, it's all about the um, the clamp angle. So what I had to do was take it off and turn it around. But when the shroud's on, I have to be able to check that it's tight. You may be able to see, probably a bit hard to see, but I, I'm about, the, the edge of the hole is covering the, the thread. So if I pull it over this way, I still can't get it in, so I'll have to drill those holes out a bit bigger. The main point is is that the shroud won't sit low enough if it uh, connects onto the uh, the hose clamp down there. So the ho hose clamp has to be, or the the tightening mechanism has to be completely clear of the um, the bottom of the shroud. But you still have to be able to. Uh, tighten it if um, if need be so that has to be done from underneath the, the car maybe it could be turned around and and tightened here um, so you may be able to point it out I don't know uh, let's, have a look, let's see if I can there it is there okay so that means that I can come in here with the shroud on and I can access it through uh, down, where are we, down there. So there's the, there's the shroud and I'm able to, to get to it that way. Okay, with the top bolts in the shroud, I am able to uh, get the fan. Remember that uh, I don't have the threads, but uh, anyway, I can get the fan and just this is lined up. Can't really see. So I can I can um, thread this in, and uh, get that started. It takes a little bit, but. Um, but I can do it. OK, 
Okay, moment of truth. Um, I'm going to go for a, uh, a start. Okay, we have uh, 14 volts at idle. Okay, here we are. It's 14th of the uh, 5th, 2024. And um, I'm using the Rodeo for work. At the moment I'm driving home. Everything's good. I've been using this car for a total of... Uh, about two and a half months and uh, all's well so thanks for watching the video please like and subscribe